Hello, and welcome to this month's edition of Spotlight on Middlesex County. I am freeholder Kenneth Armwood, and I'm happy to be here today to discuss one of the jewels in Middlesex County's programs and services. Our vocational technical high schools and academies have been racking up awards and accolades for their innovative curriculum and outstanding student performance. Here with me today to discuss current and future academic opportunities at the schools are Superintendent Diane Ballou and John Jeffries, Principal of our Academy for Science, Mathematics, and Engineering Technologies. Welcome, Diane and John. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Diane, could you give us a quick overview of the district? Sure. Um, our county school district has been in existence since 1914. We are the oldest full-time county vocational school district in the country. Um, we have five locations in the county, and we have seven schools at those five locations. Okay. Can you kind of give us an idea of the population? Uh, how many students do we have? Mm -hmm. uh, which are the largest schools? Which are the small? Which is the smallest? Our two largest schools are East Brunswick Campus and our Piscataway Campus. We have about 800 students at each of those. In total, we have about 2,400 high school students, and we have probably serve about 5,000 adult students in Middlesex County. Okay. Can you explain the difference between a technical school and a career academy? A career academy is a high school that is based on one career. For example, we have an engineering academy, which is John's school, and we also have a health academy in the Woodbridge location. A technical school provides students with a wide array of options in a variety of technical training areas. Okay. So John, speaking of John, yeah. you're relatively new to the position, so how's it going so far? It's been going great. Uh, I've gotten a warm welcome from the students and the staff and, and the parents at the, at the Edison Academy. Um, it's a little different from my last school. It's a little smaller than, than the last school, but it's been a positive, you know, a positive change for me. Um, students are, are very busy, and you know, I'm trying to keep up with my, my Twitter and my Instagram feed for all of the accolades. Um, <laughs> you know that they've been receiving um, and you know it's been it's been a great adjustment what distinguishes the Edison Academy what sets it apart from other schools I think that one of the things is that the students actually have engineering as as one of their classes for 90 minutes a day for the entire four years that they're there it's a unique opportunity for students to be able to kind of learn about engineering starting in the ninth grade uh, we have a, a civics and mechanical engineering, and we have an, an electronics and computer engineering kind of track that the students choose choose to be on. Uh, the students are also in very high uh, high level math and science courses, um, along with you know the uh, the uh, traditional courses in um, language arts and history um, and Spanish. Students can actually take Spanish there too. Great. So, mm -hmm. Right. Diane, I think the public needs to understand that our schools aren't just locally recognized. It's, our schools are nationally recognized. Um, according to my notes, we have three national blue ribbon uh, designations and two academies that are ranked uh, as among the top schools by Newsweek and U.S. News and World Report. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us, what, what is the secret to the success? Well, I think that we have provided to the students in Middlesex County a chance to really pursue a career path, and that gives them a focus for high school. And that, you know, if you think about what kids often say about school, they say, why am I learning this? What will I ever do with this? We give them the answer to that. If you're planning to be an architect, you're planning to be an engineer, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a carpenter, you want to be a cosmetologist, you can understand the application of what you're doing in the high school to your future and your family's future. We're really proud of our Blue Ribbon schools. Those are schools that were nominated by the New Jersey Department of Education based on student performance data. So we didn't select those schools. They were selected for, for us by the state, submitted to the national, and then they were recognized on a national level. Wow. Um, we also have um, rankings because of our SAT scores of our students. Our engineering school has the highest SAT score average in the state of New Jersey this year. Um, and I'd like to mention our East Brunswick School, which received the U.S. Green Ribbon, mm -hmm. and that recognizes our sustainable curriculum as well as our sustainable building practices. Mm -hmm. So our students are understanding the world in which they live and how to think about its future in the context of what they're learning in our high school. Mm -hmm. 
And also, uh, I think it's important we give thanks to the staff, uh, all staff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, oftentimes, uh, we overlook the yeah. uh, the people who aren't just in the classroom. Uh, it, it's everyone uh, that contributes to the success, to the, the maintenance worker, the cafeteria workers, everyone uh, puts into that village as, as everyone likes to Absolutely. talk about. Absolutely. Yeah. For example, our facilities manager has been wonderful in working with our Green Ribbon mm -hmm. because we've really looked at the way we do what we do, mm -hmm. from things like what kind of cleaning products we use, mm -hmm. to the way we retrofit our building, to the way we manage energy within our building, mm -hmm. and that brings the cost savings to our Board of Education and to the county government as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a win-win for everyone, I think. Speaking of our facilities, uh, I know uh, as a freeholder, uh, the Board of Chosen Freeholders, we work uh, very closely with your Board of Education uh, to provide great facilities uh, to our students. Um, can you talk about the classrooms? Um, because I know this is important for parents. Mm -hmm. um, how are they equipped? What, what kind of technology can we expect to find uh, in the classrooms? Um, how are we teaching the courses, et cetera? Well, I think one of the things that um, gives you a good reason to have a county school system is that you consolidate resources mm -hmm. so that the facilities that we are able to provide are based on putting the, the money together for the region. It's very costly to build a county vocational school. We have to provide a workplace environment in all the career major areas. For example, if you go into one of our auto shops, there's going to be lifts, there's going to be equipment, there's cars being worked on. If you go into our culinary program, it's a restaurant kitchen, you can see that the scale is larger than a typical classroom. Mm -hmm. um, and we are able to provide the kind of equipment that students will be facing in the workplace, working as a machinist, working as an engineer, working as an architect. We provide the software, the equipment, the workplace experience so that they can really, really test out what it would be like to work in that particular kind of career. Great, great. The district also works with industry leaders uh, mm -hmm. to ensure that our curriculum's up to date, that we're meeting the needs of employers. Um, how and why did these partnerships begin? Well, I think in the beginning, the county recognized the need to have a trained workforce. Mm -hmm. It was a very industrial region, and there were a lot of needs for employees. And so they created, in partnership with county government, a school to train young people to be ready for the kind of employment that's available in Middlesex County. Mm -hmm. Over the years, it's evolved to meet the changing needs of our economy. Presently, for example, we have a global logistics program and supply chain management. And we have an advanced manufacturing program that we developed in line with local manufacturers. So they were looking for employees to fill a particular set of skills that wasn't out there in the workplace, and we created a curriculum in coordination with our industry partners in order to provide that training program. So would you feel comfortable saying that that might be what contributes to our low unemployment rate in Middlesex County? Because I know according to the last statistic, I believe we're at 3.5 percent, which is well below the national and state level. Um, could that be sort of one of the things that's contributing to that low unemployment rate? I think so. I mean, um, we do a placement report, and we just looked at the numbers for last year. Of our students that are working, available for employment, not in college, 85 percent are working in Middlesex County for Middlesex County-based employers. They make their lives and their futures and their careers here in Middlesex, and that's been true for generations. Mm, yeah. We have the children and the grandchildren of students who attended our schools who are still living and working in Middlesex County. Yeah. Our, you know, our students are working and they're highly employed, so I agree that we contribute to that statistic. I, I know I traveled once to uh, close to Russia, Moldova, mm -hmm. and that was an issue they were having was retaining the intellectual capital. They get educated in the country and then go out and get jobs out in Germany or in uh, London and they can never retain all the talent that they train there. So it's great to know that we're educating our young people and they're remaining here and, and getting jobs. Yeah, we've even had in our manufacturing program employers come to talk to our juniors. When you're ready to graduate high school, here's my card. Mm. Please talk to me. Yeah. And these are Middlesex County manufacturers. Good. So it's a partnership. Great, great. John, what's the mission of the Edison Academy? So I think the, the main mission of the academy is to is to prepare students for a a, a career in engineering, but to also be um, mindful of other opportunities that could kind of stem from from an engineering career. We have students that are very interested in finance. There are some students that that actually um, have patents and they invent new products as part of their uh, senior project. 
So I think that part of it is to prepare them to become engineers, but also to allow them to have hands, hands-on experiences and um, experiences outside of the classroom to kind of be able to go and see and participate in, um, you know, engineering-related topics, uh, you know, throughout the state and throughout Middlesex County. Okay. How's the curriculum structured? How is that set up? <clears throat> So the students spend about one-fourth of their time in engineering classes. So the students are either civil, mechanical, or they're electric computer engineers. Um, the students actually take four years of mathematics. Uh, the, the graduation requirement is three. Uh, we do have some, some math electives, some, some high-level math electives like discrete math and linear algebra. And we also offer AEP statistics this year. Um, in science, it's also four years. Um, in um, health and physical education, it's four years, uh, four years of English, and we have three years of history and three years of Spanish if the students want to kind of go that far. The benefit of being on, on the campus of Middlesex County College is that students in their junior and their senior year have the ability to take classes in the fall and in the spring and they, they sign out, they go to class, and then they come back actually wow. during the school day. Um, we do have a student that recently got his associate's degree from Middlesex. And I had to excuse him to go and, and take care of his graduation stuff. So, uh, you know, they take classes at night. And Middlesex County College has a, has a relationship with NJIT. There's, so there's some students that are actually um, taking classes at NJIT um, as part of their major. Uh, in in uh, Middlesex. Wow, um, that's that's been kind of an amazing new thing for me. Wow, that's uh, great you know, to see that. Great, mm -hmm. great. Let's talk about Woodbridge. My good friend, free older Kenny, is the other <coughs> Kenny out of this bunch. Uh, is yeah. from Woodbridge. Um, what do the students study at uh, the Woodbridge Academy? So the students at the Woodbridge Academy uh, study biomedical and uh, health 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 related topics. Mm -hmm. So the students are, um, just like our academy, preparing for a career uh, in one of the health fields. Um, so the students actually go on internships and they um, are able to take college courses um, in addition to their, their, their curriculum at the school. Okay. Okay. Now, do they have to apply for the Edison and Woodbridge Academy? Yeah. Okay. So, so we have a pretty rigorous um, application process, and the students actually start to apply um, early in their eighth grade year. We look at their middle school grades for seventh and eighth grade. Uh, they they take an admissions test um, in mathematics, in language arts, um, and we have and and there's a writing sample, and we actually have a interview process where they come in. So. Um, for our academy, we had a, approximately 400 students that applied. Um, we chose around 100 to interview, um, and then we honed it down, and we have our class of 42 students for next year. Um, so it's, it's, it's a pretty rigorous process, but you know, we, we try to have a mixture of students from um, all, around, all around Middlesex County. Do you think that contributes to the success of the students in the program is that it's so rigorous and it's so competitive that we're getting the best of the best? I think that's part of it. Mm -hmm. um, we don't just look at the top scores. It's right. not the top 42 students. It's, it's uh, you know, we look at the top 100 students and, and we try to have students that have qualifying scores from all of the sending district towns. Um, but we really, through our interview process, we want to make sure that they're, that they're coming there to learn engineering, that they're interested in engineering, and that they um, want to be part of this learning community, um, which, is, you know, which is important for um, keeping them there for, for the entire four years and really having them experience a uh, great high school life. Mm. Mm. Okay. As you know, technology is very important to all of us. It's important to parents who could possibly send their child, considering sending their uh, child to the school district. Mm -hmm. 
tell us how does the technology of today play into secondary education and our, our, our vocational technical schools? So, so if we look at technology, we break it down into hardware and software. Okay, hardware would be computers, desktop computers, laptop computers, tablets, telephones, uh, you know, cell phones. Um, and then we look at software, our software, some of the software that we use, every school has a student information system and Genesis is the system that our district uses, which is probably one of the best systems to use in the state of New Jersey. Um, and it's probably the most common. Um, we also use in the engineering program, we use something called SolidWorks, and SolidWorks is a 3D design program that students can actually design objects uh, and then print them on one of our, one of our 3D printers. Mm -hmm. um, and if you've ever seen a 3D printer work, uh, it's pretty amazing that you, you know, design something, push a button, and then come back and, you know, maybe half an hour and it, there's a new object sitting there. <laughs> uh, but the students actually use it in class our 3D printers are running pretty much full tilt all day. They could run through the night if we had someone there or if we had some way to kind of monitor them. Um, so the 3D printing has, has, has really become a, a major uh, factor in our, in our engineering classes. And, and some of the science classes use it as well. Wow. Great. Great. Let's go back to you. Oh, no. sure, I was just going to sure. say, just in general, Information processing has really changed and access to information mm -hmm. is so widespread for young people today. So it has changed the way we teach across the board yeah. in that uh, teachers infuse technology and the access to the internet into a lot of the things they do. We also have more of a student-centered approach, an investigation approach, where students are going out seeking information to answer questions. Mm -hmm. So it's just yeah. a different way of thinking about learning. Okay, great. You've told us a lot of good things, Diane. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're here in Middlesex County, a lot of great public school districts, mm -hmm. a lot of them. I'm a little partial to Piscataway High School. It's a great being high a, school. Yeah, yeah, a it Piscataway is. School yeah. District, as I, I'm an alum. Mm -hmm. um, why should a parent consider sending uh, their child to uh, one of our county schools? Well, what we offer is career-based high school education. So that is the difference between a comprehensive high school, which has many great things to offer, mm -hmm. and a CTE program. Our students come in with an early focus on thinking about career choices because they're thinking about that in eighth grade, going into ninth grade. In your typical high school, you don't need to think about that. Maybe 11th grade, kids start thinking, do I want to go to college? Where would I go? What would I like to study? Students that come to our schools have a head start on that. Not only have they thought about it, they've chosen a path, and then they've studied it. So they've tried it. They've got to live being an automotive technician, being an actor being an engineer. They've got to try it to see, is this really what I thought it was? Mm. So a lot of other kids, they figure those things out when they are freshmen in college, and then they say, you know what? This isn't what I thought it would be. Now it's five years of college. Mm. Then maybe it's another college. And so it takes a little bit longer for, as a parent, considering the cost of college and the, and the likelihood of you know, picking the right career for my child, this is an, an insurance policy. It's a head start, chance to try it earlier, and a chance to focus your high school education, give kids motivation. Those students that come into the Edison program, they've entered through a competitive entrance process, yep. but they take a lot of pride in what they're doing. They're already developing an identity. I'm going to be an engineer, or I see what engineering is, I'm going to be a lawyer. But at least they've made those choices earlier on in their young life. Right. Now, we can't remain static. Mm -hmm. As great yeah. as everything yeah. is here yeah. uh, with our schools, we can never just remain where we are. What are the new areas of program development that uh, we can look forward to seeing? Well, I think in general in the district, we just started our global logistics program, and this has to do with um, managing uh, goods and services across greater marketplaces. If you think about the retail industry and the way it's changing in our region and the influx of distribution centers, companies like Amazon have come into mm -hmm. Carteret and Edison, there's huge opportunities there for kids. But the kind of skills that are needed in those, in those workplaces are new and different. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to expand our, our place in that. We'd like to support the effort to bring advanced manufacturing more, in more fertile ground here in Middlesex County, develop those, those jobs in our economy, our local economy. We also have a great arts program. 
what we, what we don't have in our arts program is a music program. So that's one of the things I'd like to try to see if there's a way to bring that into Middlesex County. Okay. Um, so we've got a lot of ideas about specific, um, you know, pathways for kids that we'd like to develop in our in our schools. Great. And John, what what's new? Uh, what what can we expect around the corner? So for the. For the Edison Academy, we're going to be looking at um, kind of developing a senior mentor program for our incoming freshmen. One of the issues that we have is sometimes the students come in there in freshman year and they're they're lost. They're you know they they don't know any of the other students that they're in the class with, um, and and they struggle because the curriculum is very rigorous. So we're going to be developing a senior mentor program with our current juniors to work with the students actually in the summer to kind of help make them a cohesive group but to also provide a um, person to go to if they you know if they have a question or if they have an issue you know to kind of use like a peer mentoring type of approach okay. um, to something like that. Our parent group um, I've been meeting with them on a regular basis they're going to be taking a more active role in our open houses um, to kind of bring in and and talk to new parents and let them know that um, you know, like this is this is how this academy works, so that they're not, um, you know, wondering what happens. Mm. Um, and they're going to be moving towards a kind of a school action team approach with their with the foundation, where it's more action oriented. And you know, these are our agendas, these are our subcommittees, and moving forward, not just an opportunity to sit and talk, but to give them some ownership and some and some decisions moving forward with the school. Um, we're looking at various uh, field trips and, and types of experiences next year, um, possibly going to MakerBot, which is, which is the, you know, one of the most common 3D printers that, that are made, um, and kind of doing a tour there. Um, our internship is, is relatively new. Our, in, our internship program for seniors is relatively new, and students go on a 10-day internship. So we're looking at kind of expanding that. Um, and one of the benefits of the internship program is as you make these connections with, with you know, these companies and, um, you know, facilities within Middlesex County, you kind of have a uh, network where, you know, students can have an option to be able to say, I, you know, I want to work in, in this uh, arch architecture firm or I want to work in this man in this. Man manufacturing setting. Um, so the more years that you actually do it, um, you know, the better it becomes. But, you know, my view on, on any school is that uh, we want to continuously improve. So we want to listen to parents, we want to listen to kids, um, listen to the teachers, and find out ways to do things better every year. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's the most important thing. Uh, that is. You're absolutely right. Uh, to sort of summarize and this question is for both of you and both of you sort of explained it but if you could package it for us where are we heading in the future where w how are we going to continue to meet the uh, student needs well I think we try to also engage with industry to see what happens to the kids after they leave the school system and what do they see as the needs for their employees. One of the things we hear a lot about is something called soft skills, which is communication yeah. mm -hmm. skills, mm -hmm. being able to be part of a team, being able to collaborate. <clears throat> it's a collaborative world. It, it, there's a lot of engagement out there, mm -hmm. and um, we need to find ways to embed that across what we do with young people, what, no matter what their major might be, to try to get them to, to practice those communication skills, learn how to be a part of the future workplace, mm -hmm. and be successful in their lives. That's what we owe those kids. Mm -hmm. So we need to, as John said, continually relook at what we're doing, um, work with our teachers in order to make sure that what we offer those students gives them their best chance for success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I work over at Job Corps mm -hmm. and I often tell yeah. our students that it, they'll teach you on the job if they need to, but it's the certain things that they don't have time to teach you, which are those soft skills. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, John? Yeah, and, and kind of to piggyback on, on what um, Diane had said, the, the soft skills are very, very important. Um, one of the things we're, we're going to be working towards with with teachers next year is doing cooperative learning structures and 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 really kind of looking at that as as a as a way to teach team building. Um, cooperative learning is different than than like a group project. Each individual student has a role, and they're interdependent on one another. And that's kind of the way that things are in a in a workplace. Um, you know. 
people aren't just sitting at their desks working in silos. Mm -hmm. um, and um, if schools are like that, then the students are not going to be as successful as if they learn how to work with a team and how to depend on each other um, and, and how to, how to uh, public speak. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another thing that, 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 that we're really working on. We're developing a new public speaking club for students to kind of practice that and really focus on, you know, the more you do it, the better off um, you are with it. So uh, that's another one of the soft skills that we're actually looking at. Uh, it all sounds great. And, and I really do, on behalf of the Board of Chosen Freeholders, thank you both. Um, I really think you've given the public a reason to have their children come to our schools. Uh, you and the staff are doing a great job, and our, our students are really making us shine as a county. So I really want to thank you, Diane, and, and thank you, John, and thank you for joining us today. It's clear to see that our vocational technical schools are successfully preparing our students for life after high school. I look forward to seeing how our schools evolve and continue to meet and exceed the needs of our youth. Thank you for joining us for this month's edition of Spotlight on Middlesex County.